Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I'm going to be talking about 10 fantasy romance books that I really want to read. <laughs> you guys know since the start of 2020 I've gotten really into fantasy romance. If you don't know what that is, it is generally a fantasy story that has a heavy focus on romantic elements. It's a little bit more romance heavy than your typical like young adult fantasies have tons of romance in, but this is where the romance element is like the focus of the story. It can sometimes be put before the fantasy elements, but it is just heavily romantic stories in a fantasy setting. Sometimes it's called fantasy romance, sometimes it's called romantic fantasy. Things like urban fantasy have a whole ton of romance in them usually, but these are 10 books in that genre that I am just desperate to read because you guys know how I love my fantasy romance. So before we get into it, I would just like to mention that this video has once again been very kindly sponsored by the lovely Skillshare. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, it is an online learning platform that has thousands of classes in pretty much any topic that you can imagine. The classes offered are all taught by industry professionals and span a wide range of topics including things like business management and e-commerce and also a lot of creative pursuits like video making, how to use Photoshop and also illustration. Now the class that I would like to recommend to you guys today is one that I'm very very interested in and it is called Animation for Graphic Designers, How to Animate a Logo Taught by William Kesling. Now I want to redo all of my channel art and also my intro and outro. I've had the one that I've got now for at least two years but a couple of things are holding me back. The first one is that I haven't really found the time to do it and the second is that I have no idea how to animate. So this class takes you through the steps of animating all the way from storyboarding right through to the programs that you need to use step by step how to do it and how to get your end result. So hopefully I am going to be able to find some time over the next couple of months to actually redo all of my channel art. Skillshare is not only extremely useful and extremely accessible but it is also extremely affordable. If you take out an annual subscription, it will cost you less than $10 per month. Obviously, I know that signing up to a subscription-based service can be a little bit daunting, which is why I'm extremely happy to let you guys know that for a limited time, if you click on the link at the top of my description box, you will get two months access to Skillshare Premium completely free, which means that for a two-month period, you can go through as many Skillshare classes and courses as you would like to, and you will not have to pay a penny. Now, I've been working with Skillshare for quite some time. I've been using using Skillshare for quite some time. So I would recommend that you guys take me up on this offer and all of the information will be in my description box. So getting into the fantasy romance books I want to read. Normally when I make a TBR video or any kind of video really, I can usually give you a pretty strong basis of what the book is about. You guys do often ask me how I'm pretty good at giving synopses and the reason for that one is that I do watch quite a lot of booktube. So when other people talk about things, I retain that information and then I can pass it on to you guys. However, a lot of the books I'm going to be talking about today are self-published. Now, I do also want to bring you a fantasy romance recommendations video or a fae romance maybe recommendations video and also a self-published recommendations video, but I'm not quite there yet. So today we are working on a fantasy romance TBR, but as a lot of these books aren't talked about a lot on booktube, I don't know a great deal about the synopsis aside from what I've read on the backs of the books and also on Goodreads. So I apologize for that. But getting into the TBR, the first one that I want to read is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. You guys may have seen me talk about this recently because it is also in a big book TBR, but the reason that this is on my TBR at all is because it's fantasy romance. I got this a couple of months ago for my birthday and at that point I hadn't really heard anything about it. This book is currently getting a lot of buzz. I'm assuming it's because the sequel has just been released at the beginning of this month. I know very little about it aside from that everybody is seeming to be loving it, but it does follow a girl who is a maiden and as a maiden she's not allowed to experience any kind of pleasure, she's not allowed to be looked upon and she is not allowed to be touched. Now we do have another character in here called Hawk and he is some sort of legendary warrior. He is assigned to Poppy who is the maiden to escort her to something that I believe is called an ascension and I'm assuming romance blossoms between those two. I have been researching fantasy romance quite a bit over the last few months because I just want to read more and more of it and this is one that was coming up a lot on Goodreads. A lot of my information on these books as well, on them actually being fantasy romance, is coming from Goodreads because as I mentioned not a lot of people have talked about some of these books. So I'm relying on Goodreads a little bit and we all know the shelving is inaccurate on there. So if 
one of these books isn't fantasy romance that I do apologize but yeah this one is highly rated on Goodreads it has a very high average rating a lot of people seem to love it and if you search fantasy romance this keeps popping up the second one is one that I've taken a little bit of a chance on it's not widely known I don't believe but it is called Fae by Cassandra Fay, and it is Daughters of El Terra book one now you guys know I like my Fae romance however I'm not sure if the characters in this book are actually Fae because the main character is called Faye and then the author's called Cassandra Faye as well. It all seems a little bit on the nose but the synopsis interested me. So this one follows a girl called Faye. She is an immortal and she has been cursed. She's really struggling with being cursed. It makes her life pretty much miserable. Now a common theme through the majority of these books is that we have a secondary character in here as well. This guy's called Kiernan and he has a history of centuries of bloodshed, war and killing. So we are having a theme of a little bit of a morally grey or tortured warrior which to be fair I'm here for it they're some of my favorite characters but Kiernan is waking up don't know what that means and he has been drawn to Faye he believes that he deserves to suffer but he doesn't think that she does and I'm assuming that he is going to try and find out if there is anything that can be done about her suffering next up I have a couple that I believe are more urban fantasy than fantasy romance but they do still have strong romantic elements the first one of those is Angel's Blood by Nalini Singh this is book one in the Guild Hunters series and this has been recommended to me by a lot of you guys because I love Crescent City. The first time I saw this series I believe was on Steph's channel from the Novelty Corner so I will link her down below. She's read all of these books and all of the spin-off books as well. She really loves them. I think she's reread quite a few as well but this follows a girl called Elena and she is a vampire hunter and she has been hired by an archangel to hunt down a killer. However the killer isn't a vampire what she's familiar with. It is a rogue archangel. So so I can see why you guys have been recommending this to me based on my love of Crescent City. I've heard great things about it. Urban fantasy until recently is not something I have been comfortable with. The short episodic and the series are really long and just as a series structure that's not something that I particularly prefer but yeah you guys have been recommending this to me. I've heard great things from Steph and I do think I'm actually going to enjoy this series. The other urban fantasy I have is another one that you guys have been recommending to me based on my love of Crescent City and that is Dark Fever by Cara Marie Moaning. This is the first book in the Fever series. Oh, another one that is quite short long series so a little bit outside of my comfort zone. This one follows a girl called Michaela whose sister is murdered so she goes to Ireland to investigate the cause of her sister's murder and somehow through this she ends up in the realm of the Fae. Now this cover does not make me think that it's an urban fantasy or anything. To me this looks like a crime novel but yeah apparently fantasy romance I mean it does say realm of the Fae. You guys have been recommending this to me a lot and hopefully I love it. The next one we have is Oath Taker by Audrey Gray. This is the first book in the Kingdom of Runes series. Now this one I was drawn to because of the cover. Honestly, a self-published book with a great cover. I am a sucker for it, especially as I have been reading and loving a lot of self-published books recently. So pretty much if they're beautiful, I'm interested. So this follows a girl called Haven Ashwood and she is rescued from captivity by Prince Bell, who is the prince of this place called Penrith. And one day Prince Bell is kidnapped. So Haven has to team up with this band of immortals led by somebody called Archeron Halfbane to get the prince back. Something else that interests me about this book is that this storyline takes them into the realm of a supposedly vicious queen and I love evil queens in fantasy stories. Immortal warriors and evil queens, honestly I'm sold. The next one I have I believe is Young Adult and I do think that it is the only Young Adult I have on this list and that is Disenchanted by Brianna Sugalski. So this one it seems very very fairy tale esque We follow a princess and a wicked secret is revealed on her 10th birthday so she's now kind of kept captive in her parents castle. She's not allowed to leave Eve. However, when she is preparing for her coronation, a letter arrives from the Witch of Lupine Grotto, which honestly she sounds amazing. And apparently this witch has a way that can cure the darkness that surrounds this princess. So this is one that I've seen recommended on booktube a couple of times because I believe there was a booktube and blog tour surrounding this release. So that is what piqued my interest and I'm interested to read it. But this is the only one I think on this list that I've picked up without looking at the synopsis. I picked it up based on recommendation alone and as the only young adult I'm expecting maybe a little bit less 
from it than I have from the other books in this list because I'm I'm much more into adult fantasy romance naturally. So the rest of the books in this video I do not own however there are ebooks with quite a few of them available either very cheaply on things like Kindle Unlimited or available on Scribd. The first one of those I think was also recommended to me by Steph from the Novelty Corner and that is Magic Bites by Alona Andrews or Iona Andrews. I believe that this is a husband and wife writing duo. The thing that I know the most about this one is the world. It's the first book in the Kate Daniels series so I'm assuming the protagonist is called Kate Daniels but it takes place in a almost science fiction futuristic world where technology has been pushed too far so the world has kind of started to fail and magic has now taken over. However both of these things kind of come in waves so you have a wave of magic where things like defensive spells are working really well but all of the technology breaks down and then the magic will disappear so all of the technology works but all of your spells will fail. The world does sound really interesting in this. I really don't know much about the plot but it is one of those that strays a little bit more into urban fantasy again I think but I do believe that there will be quite a lot of romance in this series as well. The next one is Radiance by Grace Draven. Now I have to admit the synopsis of this one does not interest me too much. The reason that I want to read this one is because if you search fantasy romance on Goodreads this one pretty much comes up at the top of any recommendations list. This follows a woman who is a noble woman but not like a super special one and she has known all her life that her only real importance to her family will be that she marries strategically so that her family gain more elevation in society I guess and so she is sent to marry a prince who is just one of the random heirs to the throne he's not a prince of any importance either and it is a romance between those two. So the next one I can't believe I'm putting this on a TBR to be honest it is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. I watched a rant review of this book quite a while ago it was by Ali Enchanted she since took the video down which is really sad because it was hilarious and I really want to watch it. So this is a fantasy romance series about the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming down to earth. So each book in the series is about one of the four horsemen. Now the first book follows a girl who wants to stop the horsemen of the apocalypse because obviously she doesn't want the world to end, she doesn't want to die and it is a romance between those two. So I've already watched a rant review on this and honestly in that review it was full of spoilers. I don't remember them now but it was absolutely hilarious and I was like I'm never reading that book. It sounds ridiculous. However I have recently read the first two books in the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa and I absolutely love that series. So I've now put Pestulas back on my TBR. I am a little bit cautious about going into it but I do know that Bobby from Bobby Reads Too Much is going to be reading that I think this month and she also loves the Bargainer series which she read on my recommendation. So I think before I commit to this one I will wait and see what Bobby says about it. But yeah it's weird because I've heard terrible things about the book but I do really like Laura Thalassa. And the last book we're going to be talking about in this video is yet again one that I'm a little bit dubious about reading but I am going to be reading it and I may hopefully also be reading it quite soon. So this one is Daughter of the Blood by Anne Bishop. This is a little bit older I believe than the rest of the books on this TBR and it is actually quite a well-liked fantasy romance series. I do believe it has quite a few problematic elements I can't say because I don't know too much about it. I haven't seen many reviews on this book but it contains an ancient prophecy that is about to be fulfilled by a witch queen coming to the kingdom to become the queen. However the witch in question is very naive and susceptible to influence and corruption so I believe it is about the different political factions trying to control her and make her be either good or evil. Now the reason I'm dubious about reading this one is because it has been compared a lot to A Court of Thorns and Roses, specifically I believe A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas, to the point where the similarities are a little bit too similar and this book does actually predate the Accord of Thorns and Roses series. Now the Accord of Thorns and Roses series is one of my favourites of all time and I do think it will make me a little bit sad if I too conclude that A Court of Mist and Fury is a little bit too like this series. Sarah J Maas has said in I believe multiple interviews that she was heavily influenced by Anne Bishop. If you look for recommendations based on Sarah J Maas this comes up because she herself has said that you should read it you like her books. So I feel like if anything suspicious or a little bit dubious was going on then she wouldn't be out there openly recommending that you read this because it inspired her and she really enjoyed it. But yeah I just I don't want to taint 
my favorite books by reading this. I can separate things like that. Normally I can accept a thing and still like a thing, but I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried about it, but I do really want to read this because Sarah J Maas herself says that it's good, so why wouldn't I? Okay, so those are not all, but some of the fantasy romance books that I'm most interested in reading. One of the things that kind of holds me back on a lot of these is that the series are kind of long and if I read a book in a fantasy romance series, like if I read the first book, the next time I pick up fantasy romance is likely to be the next book in that series so it does take me quite a while to get around to them which is why I'm nervous about picking up series like this where I know that there's multiple installments. Not sure about this one but I know this one has spin-off series as well so when I finish this I want to move on to the spin-off series and I'm still currently only four books into the Sucky Stackhouse series by Charlene Harris which isn't, it's like paranormal romance which some of these will also fall into paranormal romance but it's not super amazing it doesn't have the romance elements that I love but I do still want to finish that series because I do enjoy some of the elements of it so yeah it takes me a long time to get to these books every time I pick up a book I'm starting a new series and so it just it takes me longer and longer but I do really want to read all of these books and I hope I will get to them at some point please let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these if you recommend them if there's any of these you think I should pick up before another especially all the self-published ones in here because I've heard very little about them but I think that that is about it for this video guys so once again a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video if you would like to claim your free two months of Skillshare then the link is of course at the top of my description box well that's it for this video guys so please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head into my description box you will find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website the Instagram for that and 10% off discount code so that's it from me today guys bye Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go Where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no